Indian Muslim shopkeepers banned from selling at Hindu festival. Organizers of the Kote Marikamba uh, Batra, a celebration held every two years in Shiva Monga, um, Karnataka, recently banned Muslim vendors from setting up stalls. The center of the celebration is the Marikamba Temple, a temple dedicated to the Hindu goddess Marikanda Devi. According to the Hindu, local leaders of the hardline Hindu groups BJP, Bajring Dal, and Vishwa Hindu Parishad pressured the organizers of the festivals into making the decision. The Sugi Mari Puja, another yearly festival, has also been because they had protested against the Karnataka. Wait, go a little Karnataka's back. You, you, go, you got cut for a second. Just a little bit back. Okay. Sorry. The Sugi Mari Puja, another yearly festival, has also banned Muslims allegedly because they had protested against the Karnataka High Court's ruling that supported allowing hijabs to be banned in government schools. Quote, we agreed to their demand in the instance in the interest of a smooth conduct of, a fe of the festival, a festival organizer said. Before the announcement, some Muslim shopkeepers had already paid for renting out stalls, and the sudden ban under right-wing gang pressure is causing issues. Several Hindu festival community members, committee members are unhappy with this decision, as they were forced to take this action. Uh, Chana Basapa, a leader of a local BJP group in Shivamonga, said that the banning is justified because, according to him, the local Muslim community failed to properly condemn the recent murder of a Hindutva activist. Wait, so you want to collectively hold everybody responsible for not... Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. So you're like, oh, you're, you, you're all guilty of all of oh my god this is like this is your mind on collectivism collective punishment by the way isn't this like they're coming to serve you food like what is that like why are you not happy with that i mean shouldn't you celebrate that like they feel like they i mean these are these are muslims who are open enough to hindus to feel like yeah, let's go serve them food, <laughs> right? Like, shouldn't you be welcoming that? Like, oh, thank you. Isn't that, like, nice? I gotta, like, it's, oh, my God. I don't know. Is this, like, normal, or is this becoming a, big of a, a bigger deal than it used to be? So it's definitely not normal. There are many instances in which this is actually blatantly unconstitutional. Um, let me pull up the exact um, articles of the Constitution which this violates. Um Oh, shoot. My web page is wow, being crazy. Um, so what's interesting is that one of these festivals, I believe it's it's the main festival that this story surrounds, um, is uh, many people across faiths will participate in this festival and actually give um, donations or tokens to the goddess for the sake of good luck. And it's well documented and not denied by anyone, apparently, that Christians and Muslims constantly and have historically participated in this festival like even these monotheistic religions in this area participate in the veneration of this deity and also participating in you know um and asking for some some good luck in, in exchange for you know these little participations um so i thought that was very interesting so it's not like there is, you know, a, a, an opposition necessarily from these groups towards this festival. Um, two, I think it's very important to discuss this in the context of ongoing economic boycott of Muslim communities. This is something that is going on across the nation. This is something that has been going on for many years. And it's also something that has been explicit, saying many groups um, across regions will say we are explicitly boycotting business from any member of the Muslim community simply for the fact of their Muslim faith. So they're trying to economically punish and starve off and deprive the Muslim community simply because of their faith. And this is illegal. And this this is, is just another element of that. Okay, but this is illegal based on India's law. So is there going to be any reaction to this? 
I'm I'm not sure. So, okay, let me see. In clear violation of the Indian Constitution, maxim of equality for all, Article 14, and non-discrimination to none, Article 15, under pressure from Hindutva groups, the organizers of a historical historic festival in Karnataka have banned Muslim shopkeepers from conducting business during it. So again, this is happening in Karnataka, which has the the hijab row controversy, right? So, and then there is also we've been talking about for months the rise in uh, violence against minorities in Karnataka. This um, has been a very steep spike in rise against violence against Christians specifically. And there's also been a huge rise in um, controversy over quote unquote forced conversions. Um, the, I, I believe um, Karnataka was one of the uh, states that recently put forward legislation that actually essentially criminalizes converting to a different religion, except if you're converting a quote unquote back to Hinduism, um, where, you know, you have to report to a magistrate 30 days in advance that you're going to change your religion. And if you don't, you can be subject to prosecution and fines of potential years in jail. And also the police can get involved in special investigations into your conversion. So this is all happening in this state. And this is just the latest act of, you know, majoritarianism and um, e explicit harassment and pressure. And the fact that one of the organizers, the organizers of the festival said, quote, we agreed to their, meaning the Hindu hardliners, demand in the interest of smooth conduct of the festival. That sounds like something that you would say when you're being extorted. Like the smooth conduct of the festival what would they do if Muslim shopkeepers were allowed to participate? Like that gives me, I, my interpretation of that is that they are full aware that if they went on with the Muslim shopkeepers at this festival, as they paid to participate in, then there could be violence. What do you, I mean, what do you think about that interpretation, Armin? I could be out of pocket. Um, yeah, no, it's possible. I'm not sure though. You know, the sad thing about this to me is that the best way to, one, two of the best ways to uh, build connection between people um, and fight bigotry um, is through food and through commerce. And basically, they're stopping both of these with one in one go, right? Like people who are have business ties with each other and trade with each other and sell and buy from each other, they're less likely to it reduces the chances of them going against each other and also people who eat with each other share food with each other food is a good way to bring people together right so there's actually so social to... studies about how the power of um empirically lessening prejudice through meal sharing right it's one of the best so, ways to do it so they are like basically stopping one of the best ways to bring muslim and hindus together right um I want to highlight we have a whole bunch of comments start. Yeah, so go should... for it. Okay. Um, blank name is saying they make great vegetable food. Why ban them? <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, I'm sure the food... <laughs> yeah. Uh, Katie saying, I have been hearing too many instances of serving of service workers being asked their name to determine their religion so people can decide whether they want their service or not. Wow, unbelievable. This is like, like 1930s Germany, like like looking for Jewish names and stuff like that. Like, like the in open India, they're looking for Muslims. It is crazy. Is there any like there's nowhere on the planet, unlike maybe just China, that is this bad? Like India, like India is so sad because India is supposed to be part of the secular democ democratic countries, right? Like when it comes to like the world of like the forces of illiberalism, right? You think like Russia and China is joining that force, right? And the forces of liberal liberal countries, you're thinking like Western Europe, North America, and Japan and South Korea, right? You like China is like the the middle, like right now is like on on the books is supposed to be like a secular democracy, and I'm hope like. It's so bad that these values are being so d destroyed there because it would be such a great ally to these other countries that are fighting against the forces of tyranny right now, right? I'm hoping, I'm hoping the, the anti-CCP um, attitudes um, in, in India eventually pushes India in the direction of these other countries, li pro-liberal countries, but we'll see. 
Um, yeah, Eric true. is saying, yeah. Eric is saying that's nice. That's nice. That's nice, mate. But Muslims serving food to Hindus will become food jihad. Haven't you seen how Hindutva demonizes Muslims by falsely accusing them of spitting on food? Um, yeah. So we yeah. did stories about quote unquote spit jihad, and what's yes, really have- interesting is that the spit jihad thing plays into um, stereotypes and propaganda about Muslims being the spreaders of the big disease that's going around the world. I have to use coded language because of YouTube. And what's so interesting about that specific piece of propaganda is that it very closely mirrors Yahtzee. Okay, again, you can code the language, bad people during World War II. Yahtzee propaganda against the Jewish people as purveyors of disease and typhoid and pestilence like it very closely mirrors that same dehumanizing and othering propaganda from the 1930s so it's very concerning um katie is saying there are muslims who are changing their names to get small jobs but if their real names are discovered they are har- harassed and accused of doing jihad by hiding their names oh my god you can't win I don't understand this this question by Aqua. So, Aqua is saying Muslims consider halal food only when it's made by Muslims. So why not keep them to their own people? Because that's not how it works. Because other the Muslims don't think that halal, the food that they make, should be only e- eaten by them. They don't have to. Like they can share it. I don't understand. Like you're coming up, you're making up rules also, that they don't Aquamarine. have. Also, Aquamarine. People can make that decision on their own. Yeah, you don't People have to make that decision. People organizing to d- deny them the ability to provide service is discrimination, a-hole. Yeah. Also, James is saying, and what do Muslims say about Hindus in a mostly Muslim-dominated country? I, James, what, what does this got them? to do with... Yeah, this is what about them. What does this got to do with, what we, with, the, with these Muslims who are being denied the service? This is again your people who think collectively about large groups of people have are so enabled enable to be to judge people on an individual la- basis. Like I don't think like no matter how much you explain to them, sometimes it's just for them, it just doesn't compute. You know, they just look at people as an entire group of people as a collective. They can never just like go one by one. It's like they seem to be incapable of doing that. It's unbelievable. Uh, it's something that I really take for granted. It's just by like explaining, like, "Hey, that's about a group, not about a person." Like that, that would be understood. Like, no, <laughs> we're not... treating them like we're treating these people like shit over here because those other people over there would treat us like crap. Treat those other people like crap over there. Like, what? Those are those people over there, and these are other people. That doesn't over make here. it okay. That's like, <laughs> like, what is that okay? Like, what? How is this related? It's almost where, like I don't know. I. I'm gonna, I don't know, do this to you because that person did that to that other person. Okay, makes absolute sense. Sure, James, you're insane. You're insane. Um, Katie has oh. two other good points, saying um, some of my friends who discovered some names by chance had the Muslim service providers beg them to not reveal them to anyone because they fear losing their job. It's heartbreaking. Unbelievable. That shows you like how bad the social situation is, like the links that yeah. people go to to hide their own name, like simply their name. It really reminds me of, you know, like Jewish immigrants coming to America and changing their whole names because, you know, they didn't want to face discrimination for having Cohen as their last name or something. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.